This is Kranti Kamampati. I am the IoT Solutions Architect within Avnet. Today I will be going through the STM32 Discovery Kit IoT node integration with Avnet's IoT Connect Cloud Platform. So this is going to be a technical deep dive uh, to go through the steps we have gone through in terms of our journey uh, to connect uh, the platform. So here are the key topics I'll be covering in my presentation today in terms of why we use STM32, um, the hardware selection, OS selection, development environment, the different protocols and technologies which we used, our IoT Connect platform, how it relates into Azure IoT Hub, some of the security aspects and also the key things in terms of OTA firmware updates. So um, from Avnet's perspective, we work with uh, different uh, customers, uh, both at the component level um, and also complete like a product solution from end to end in terms of designing the solution, selecting the right components, developing the firmware, manufacturing a complete end to end uh, solution. So here are some of the devices which we've been working with, uh, water meter, air quality sensors, asset trackers, gaming devices medical equipment, HVAC, and industrial uh, systems. So we were looking for a, a smaller IoT Connect uh, platform which we can use in solutions uh, like these. And one of the things with the STM32 we prefer or we like is the low power option with the L4. Um, so that's the processor which we used the micro in, in our uh, solution here. Um, so for example, in this water meter, we were actually um, uh, tracking the usage and reporting up with the cellular uh, uh, connectivity. Um, so similar type of IoT applications, uh, we've been uh, using the same platform across uh, different uh, solutions. So as part of the journey, we were looking at, okay, where do we get started? How do we go about it? So this is what typically our team goes about, like with starting a new IoT application with the different uh, micros. Um, the first thing what we have done is uh, we have taken the STM32 L4 Discovery Kit IoT node. Um, so I put in the links here in my presentation so it's easy to access and you can refer to those links um, later um, so this particular platform is is very interesting in terms of it's a low power platform it already has bluetooth in there it has wi-fi capability uh, various sensors magnetometer gyro um, the, the cool thing is it has the debugger on board the st link and also we can use a different environment so it's a complete solution that uh, we can get started like pretty quickly so our developer likes this platform pretty much it's like and uh, it's easy for uh, the team to come up to speed as they're switching from one project to the other this is a familiar environment so that's one of the reasons why we uh, start most of our ST projects with these uh, the discovery node and usually there is some slight variation from one variant to the other but uh, this is kind of our uh, go-to hardware uh, platform Okay, um, so typically once we have the hardware selected, um, then we look at in terms of the operating system and what we need. So here are kind of the three major things which we consider, especially with an ST platform. There are other options uh, which we do consider, uh, but at a high level, um, we primarily look at the ST HAL uh, because it's it's a simpler uh, system with the drivers, APIs, and ST has done in terms of the packaging, like the, the overall project and everything. It's it's a ready-made solution, and you can be up and running pretty quickly. Um, so and it could be ported from across a different uh, ST platform. So that's one of the reasons why um, we like this for a quick uh, solutions. Um, the other uh, two OSs which we do consider is the ARM embed OS. Um, so as ARM has been um, actively working on this OS, so there are various libraries uh, that are available, especially the SSL and so the TLS libraries uh, uh, that are well uh, proven out um, with this OS. So that's one of the things uh, which uh, uh, we like about this operating system. And the other one, it's becoming much more uh, prominent is the free RTOS. It's, it's very powerful, tiny and modular uh, structure. 
uh, with the complete ecosystem. Um, so depending upon the project and the complexity of the project, we tend to switch between these different OSs. So if, if it's a simple solution, we need to get up and running uh, pretty quickly. We use the SD HAL. Um, if we need to bring in like a complex application, there has multiple IOs and everything. So depending upon the driver's availability, we tend to switch between either the ARM or the free autos operating systems. Okay. Um, so a typical development environment, um, so there are different options with the SD platform uh, which we can um, select. Um, most of the most of one we use uh, Eclipse uh, GCC where we can uh, uh, build the application, generate the hex, the binary file and uh, program uh, using the SD link. Um, so that's one of the things um, we prefer to use Eclipse. Uh, but we also use depending upon the project and some of the optimizations we want to make it within the project if we either use keel or um, uh, IAR or in some cases we use ARM embed online uh, to build up the the package so uh, there are different options so overall like um, each of these platforms like or the uh, development environment has their own pros and cons um, it's your choice you can just pick any of these things so for anyone getting started Eclipse GCC is pretty good before you make the investment with uh, some of the other IDs you can, for a smaller projects you you don't need to uh, purchase their IDs uh, because they allow like um, a limited uh, evaluation uh, but uh, if you are looking to make a fairly large uh, project you definitely want to consider one of those things because they do like a better optimization of the compiled uh, binaries okay um, so here are the high level protocols and technologies like um, what um, we tend to use in most of our IoT projects um, and these are some of the key ones there are in some cases we tend to uh, have to go with other things also as needed uh, but most of the IoT applications no matter what you would need to have uh, the HTTP stack and the HTTPS uh, capability uh, for secure connections so we tend to put in the secure certificates that can make ensure right like, uh, um, it's a valid uh, SSL certificate so we tend to uh, authenticate to the backend server to make sure like okay there is nothing um, man in middle attacks so we tend to try to um, uh, 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 keep the HTTP connection secure. So the TLS and SSL libraries are a must for any IoT applications. So that's one of the things we look for. And uh, depending upon the software stack, you need to look, pick and choose um, the SSL library. Uh, so there are some pretty good open source libraries, but are also there are some commercially available SSL libraries out there, uh, which you can use. Um, in terms of IoT connections with I Azure IoT Hub, in most of the cases we use MQTT, uh, but in some cases, we we use MQP, uh, QP. Um, so uh, most of the MQTT stacks uh, are pretty uh, powerful, taking care of the publish and subscribing uh, the capabilities with Azure IoT Hub. Uh, we have experimented with the uh, different MQTT libraries out there, and uh, pretty much all of them are uh, uh, well uh, written. Uh, so we tend to, depending upon the OS, again, we tend to switch between some of the different libraries. Um, the other key thing is having the proper networking stack is, is important. Um, the reason uh, why the networking stack is, is important is especially in the next uh, two things, so the Wi-Fi drivers and cellular, you want to have the Wi-Fi and the cellular drivers integrated at the appropriate networking stack layer. So you can call the TCP IP, the socket connections or your HTTP library or your MQTT library can uh, use the networking stack uh, with, with the native calls Otherwise, you would kind of have to bypass those things or you would have to make your own connections um, using those the Wi-Fi or the cellular drivers. So what we tend to do is like uh, depending upon whether it's a cell uh, which cellular modem we're going to use, we, we tend to abstract the communication with the cellular modem into the networking stack and same thing with the Wi-Fi driver. So depending upon the hardware platform, you tend to kind of like because of the cost reasons and some of the benefit reasons like uh, so if you are having Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you might use a different different uh, 
a chipset if you just need only Wi-Fi you might use a different chipset and same thing cellulars there are different modems out there so depending upon the hardware platform this is one of the key areas where you need to uh, spend some time understanding the networking stack okay how these different uh, uh, the modems work and how you are going to integrate um, uh, these uh, the, the the components into your uh, networking stack so that's that's one of the key key areas we tend to help our customers okay uh, in the appropriate modem selection because of the region and the carriers the support uh, uh, we from Avnet work with the uh, different carriers and MVNOs and we have the capability to understand okay which region like what is the cost uh, advantage across with, uh, e the different carriers and even if it's a global uh, uh, solution we would we can work with the different MVNOs and put together the right uh, the sims and the right carrier the right cost structure and then based on that uh, help integrate the corresponding the modem into your software stack is is what we tend to do so it's it's kind of in some cases it's pretty simple taking some of the cellular the stacks like which we have like in the kits we have as, as a starting point uh, but you're trying to look for like a complete iot solution as a global solution avnet can help in that aspect uh, integrating the solution into your uh, the product so we are kind of done like in a combination of things uh, as a joint team with some of our other customers but this is as an iot project this is one of the key areas that's it's important to have the proper networking stack with the Wi-Fi drivers and the cellular and on top of that the appropriate the security libraries are important so um, there is this is where the overlap between the embedded programming and the cellular or the the cloud infrastructure is is a must where the teams have to come together uh, because the embedded developers they have some experience on the low level like on the programming wise but they're a little bit rough on the networking stack and all the communication onto the cloud and same thing with the IT teams that are working on the server side they don't have knowledge in terms of the embedded stack and that's where you need to bring the teams together to kind of have the common understanding and understanding about these protocols and how they is uh, come together within the IoT solution okay um, in terms of the Avnet's IoT Connect uh, platform uh, we have an elaborate platform where we help uh, our customers take an edge device all the way up to the application uh, connecting the edge device reading the sensor data going through the gateways or the actual from the device directly via cellular onto a cloud platform and then uh, showcasing the data into the application we also have like uh, ready-made solutions that are available especially in terms of uh, predictive maintenance of recommendation engines analytics so we have like uh, multiple solutions out there um, you can see some of the solutions here like a smart factory smart asset monitoring connected worker uh, smart office smart top fleet management so these are some of the solutions that avnet offer using the iot connect platform so the key advantage with the iot connect platform is it enables a quick solution deployment um, connecting your devices it takes care of all the user management device management security aspects of it so instead of uh, um, you trying to figure out each of the individual pieces needed uh, to build an iot solution um, so this is uh, a busy slide. Um, um, Avnet uses Azure um, IoT Hub, uh, Azure uh, platform behind the scenes on the IoT Connect platform to put together the complete solution. As you can see from Microsoft side, there are various components that are involved in terms of putting together on a complete IoT solution. So what Avnet has done is, is brought together all of those different components and created a ready to use a solution that can be deployed uh, within uh, or like uh, deployed pretty quickly and and as you can see here this particular platform takes care of all the authentication the device management user management and the key thing with an iot solution is the data analytics and the processing so we can actually deploy a, an ai and ml solution pretty quickly on this thing so this is where like our customers come to avnet to help uh, deploy the complete solution and it's a one-stop shop uh, from the device all the way up to the cloud solution instead of trying to involve like uh, multiple teams together and trying to coordinate between them so that's where avnet can come into the picture and help a complete end-to-end uh, -end, uh, solution deployment so um, the key areas which i'm focusing in, in today's presentation is on connecting an stm32 from the embedded perspective to the cloud here uh, but once the data is published into the cloud then 
actual processing of the data making sense of the data is a whole another big exercise that we go through with our with, with our customers and these data keeps evolving and we keep uh, improving the solution and, and releasing new versions of it so avnet has a big team of data scientists that helps uh, process this particular data and in, in help uh, generating ai models that can be deployed onto the hardware so here are some of the key things um, Avnet's IoT Connect uh, platform provides uh, in terms of the device management. So with any IoT solution, you need to understand like, okay, how you're going to manage the devices. So in this case, the devices, you need to have a proper hierarchy structure, proper permission structure to make sure like, okay, right users have the right access to the right uh, uh, device. So that's where the device management comes into picture. Um, it also involves the appropriate security measure that's it's needed because uh, um, you don't want to ha have your IoT devices exposed out in the wild where anyone can control or can um, mess with the data that's coming in there so that's where we work with our teams to understand the security measures that are needed so I'm going to be covering some of the security aspects which we consider so the device management so that's one of the key things troubleshooting like device connectivity so that's one of the key things um, with IoT solutions uh, um, there are different aspects and especially going back to my com com comment about the networking stack um, whether it is cellular or Wi-Fi in some cases you have to traverse through firewalls um, there are certain ports that are blocked etc so there are a lot of things that need to be taken care of uh, in terms of device connectivity into into the cloud and that's where uh, um, the troubleshooting aspect is going to be an important thing in in the platform so we know okay when the device last connected what is the communication what are the error logs etc those are all the things that are handled in the device management we also take care of um real-time tracking like the location the, the data information that's coming in from the device and at a granular level we can turn on and off certain uh, uh, data things that uh, the device can uh, send um, in addition to this we also have like a twin uh, property where we can actually save the uh, settings for the device and that information can be synced with, with the device so there are a lot of features in terms of the device management uh, IoT Connect uh, platform uh, provides so in addition to the device management user management is a, is a key aspect uh, which we offer um, the user management takes care of like the roles and permissions and it also creates a tree based hierarchy where you can have uh, different uh, levels of permissions for different users um, so this is another elaborate area permission structure uh, that IoT Connect uh, supports another key aspect would be the firmware management with uh, with all the IoT devices, there is you need to plan for pushing new firmware updates. So as you build the application, there could be bugs, there could be changes, there could be enhancements. So with the IoT Connect platform, we can push new firmware binaries. So you can select which particular hardware, which particular customer group, which user, and in the case, the entity we refer to as, as an entity um, gets the firmware update. So all of that is managed to the, uh, through the platform. So from an ST, the solution wise, once we build the binary, uh, the initial application is programmed uh, at the end of the line in the factory but once the, so the device is deployed all the firmware update everything is managed through the platform so we have like a real-time ability to push firmware updates to the, to the device to handle any security issues any bugs or enhancements uh, through the platform so these um, the three things which I covered earlier are related to the management the device management user management and the firmware management so once the device is connected and you get the data what to do with the data is where the data analytics and the storage comes into picture we can provide different um, alerts events notifications based on the, the data that is uh, provided uh, fr from the device and uh, we can uh, make sense in terms of different graphs uh, dashboarding uh, reporting uh, we can do that um, so those are all the things we, we leverage a bunch of uh, Azure IoT tools uh, um, in accomplishing this so for example we use like a power bi dashboard to uh, put together um, 
a nice clean dashboard uh, based on the customer uh, the requirements and we do have various connectors where the customers uh, take the data and uh, push the data into their uh, the platform so that's one of the things uh, iot connect provides as as a one stop shop to handle all of this uh, the key features and and the thing is it's ease of use and ability to get your solution up and running so once you get the device the firmware and you get the basic the data coming through um, now how to handle the cloud side of it so this particular uh, the exercise the journey what we are going through is going from end to end from the device all the way up to the cloud okay so in terms of the security aspects there are three approaches we tend to take one is a certificate based um, where each device has a certificate a device certificate and these certificates are authenticated on the back end so there are two approaches which we tend to take one is a self signed certificate and the other one is a ci signed certificate so there are pros and cons between the different certificate mechanisms but this is one of the key things we tend to do like for each of the iot device that's connected so at the end of the line at the factory we program a secure certificate into secure location for the device so we know okay a valid device only authenticates or connects to the back end to the cloud solution so this is one of the things um, in certain cases we use key based authentication uh, but certificate is is what we preferred um, in other cases we actually prefer using a tpm uh, based uh, solution so it's a trusted platform module um, so we we connect that uh, um, to the micro and with all the communication to the back end with the proper endorsement keys we ensure that it is uh, secure um, and securely connected uh, to the cloud platform um, so here is um, another aspect in terms of security each device needs a unique id and you want to track down the device based on a unique id so there are different ways of uh, creating a unique id um, stm32 the reason we like it is also it has a unique device of, of id that's programmed uh, within the chip itself at the factory so you can use that as a unique id so here is a link uh, at the talks a little bit more about the unique id of the device okay um, so other key features as i was referring to about like ota firmware update is is one of the key aspects of um, an, an iot solution and in terms of st stm32 we have seen uh, this particular uh, the, the solution is completely built in terms of uh, the dual bank approach how to program or how to like update the binaries um, on on the on the micro itself like on the flash partition so there are certain portions you want to be updatable certain portions uh, you don't want to be changed so for example like a user settings the device set certificates etc security aspects so you don't want certain things to be changed so here is the link in terms of uh, the over the air update um, how st recommends uh, building an ota uh, solution so uh, this particular document pdf has like elaborate uh, steps on what needs to be done so we we use the solution in most of our uh, the projects and we adapt it in some cases make some adjustments uh, based on the customer requirements uh, we make some adjustments but this is typically where we start off like as a starting point uh, uh, for ota firmware updates okay um, so in terms of the next steps um, I, I would recommend getting an stm32 discovery iot node uh, that's definitely a starting point so getting one of those devices uh, as, as a must have um, here are a couple of links uh, which i put in uh, which we use as a starting point uh, there is a sample application from microsoft azure in terms of using the stm32 uh, iot discovery kit so the first link um, so that's where uh, we take that link and essentially program that binary onto the device and connecting it to azure iot hub so the key thing with iot connect uh, the avnet iot connect is it's it's, it's based on uh, azure iot hub and so any connectivity you have into azure iot hub uh, will be sufficient and we can add the additional the json formatting messages to connect into iot connect so that's why we refer to as as azure as a starting point in making sure your device is connecting uh, into microsoft azure um, in, in addition to microsoft azure examples st also has provided various libraries to connect uh, into azure in terms of the networking stack the tls uh, the libraries etc that is needed mq etc so here are the links um, which i would recommend kind of like go following through those links they're pretty straightforward in terms of uh, uh, building your own application so this is where i would uh, recommend um, as a starting point 
Um, so this is the end of my presentation. Hope this is gives a, a good uh, starting point. And uh, due to the time constraint, I'm not able to go through like uh, details about uh, the different aspects. But uh, if you need any further help, if you have any further questions, you can reach out to me directly, or you can reach out to one of the team members here uh, that's uh, present. Um, uh, it, uh, you can contact one of these uh, that the team members here. Thank you again um, and uh, looking forward uh, to see your IoT application up and running. Thank you.